Good evening, everyone. Welcome to We Fan TV. I feel like I'm spamming everybody with videos at this moment in time. I think it's just because we're all getting a little bit giddy and excited about the start of the season. So I kind of make no apology for it. So welcome to the first, I say, proper Wigan Fan TV of the year. And I, I say that with no uh, disrespect to, to Matt and his, uh, and, and his shot that like he did last week, um, which was kind of taken off on a tangent by the one and only Stuart Minnis. Uh, but we're back to normal. Uh, we've got a regular slot now, which we're going to try and keep to, which is 8 o'clock on a Friday. Eight o'clock on a Friday night? No, it's not. It's eight o'clock on a Wednesday night. Um, so joining me for the first show of the year, Mr. David Bailey. David, are you well? Yeah, good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice and busy this week, doing lots and lots of things. Uh, Mark uh, from Super League Pod, who uh, hey, yeah. was also on uh, on Matt's uh, debating show, and the person who team I think of one. <laughs> yeah, the team of one. <laughs> Uh, the person who were one surprised to see him on our screens for many different reasons, who may enlighten us if he possibly can, uh, is we were, we were just talking about this, uh, Gareth. What is the name of your paper? You are the sports editor of the St. Austell Voice. St. Austell Boy. Voice. All of us got it wrong. Uh, Gareth, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. You maybe can enlighten everybody on why uh, it was possibly touch and go and why there's an angry mob outside uh, your hotel at this moment in time. Um, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> do, you, do you want to enlighten on that or is it, or is it still a delegate? Uh, yeah, I, I can tell everyone why. Uh, I wrote a, like you have to do when you're a journalist, you have to write articles that people don't like about one of the local football teams on our patch and some people said some pretty nasty things on social media about what I wrote, but obviously what happened, our sales of papers went up last week because everyone wanted to know what's going on. So, you know, there we go. That's it. Tin act a bit tinted, <laughs> but other than that, I'm, <laughs> I'm all right. You sent us some of, the, uh, some of the snippets off Twitter as well. You were getting <laughs> quite a little bit of stick on Twitter. Yeah, I was, but it's, uh, to be honest, in, in all seriousness, it's just part of the territory now with, with, with journalism and with social media that people can hide behind a screen and say yeah. what they want. A little yeah. bit like we're doing tonight, isn't it, really? We're yeah. in front of the screen, though. We're not well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably should be behind it, though. Um, <laughs> right, let's, let's, let's get started. Any, if anybody's got any questions that's watching or wants to take the, uh, the conversation off on this tangent, uh, you're more than welcome to. As always, I don't have a plan of what we're going to talk about, really. So um, I guess without a plan, let's get started. Um, Mark, let's come to you expectations for the season we, we've you know we it's at that stage where everybody's like who's your favorite for man of steel which we're going to talk about because we have nothing else to talk about uh, everyone's sort of anticipating what possibly might happen it's a different year for Wigan because of Adrian Lamb coming in and then Sean Edwards next year what are your hopes and aspirations for Wigan in 2020 I know this is taking on Matt Shaw a little bit but uh, no, I, seeing as you are on your own <laughs> I think we were all pretty unanimously agreed that we're all really excited for what we think might be a more entertaining 2019 if uh if steward has stuck to the script a little bit more <laughs> he might have not only talked about blake austin at warrington and and uh jason clark you mentioned at warrington as well but also the signings leeds have made uh, saints have lost some high caliber players but they brought in some other you know high caliber replacements for those players so all around the league you know catalans have got a lot stronger haven't they by taking one of our best players and it might be not not great for us but it's great for the league and so that's all really exciting and then we have this fresh approach to look forward to don't we this exciting attacking rugby league that we're sort of being promised and i think from what i understand the the rest of the fan base is buying into it too aren't they we were told season yeah. ticket sales are, are up from um, from this time last year. Sales for the World Club Challenge game are, are going well. The club are hoping to get uh, over 20,000 for that, aren't they? And um, I, I think, if I'm right, sales are ahead of where they were for the Cronulla game. So get you know if you want to get a particular spot in the stands, go get your tickets for, for that one too. I'm really excited for things like that. And the new camp is just another level. You were asking a lot of the players, weren't you, when you were at the media yeah, day yeah. about the new camp game. And... Um, um, I we're probably all around fo uh, social media groups that see that talk about it all the time. Like people, wh where are we meeting up? When when are we doing this? Where are we having a party in which Spanish town on which beach? Are we playing games of tag rugby and all that? So I'm I'm really excited about all of that for our season. I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm I'm buzzing for the season. If you the see me, side sorry. of it. Yeah, if you see me chuckling away, it's just because I've just clicked on to what uh, Peter Meadows said a few minutes ago, and he's put hashtag clones, and I was thinking, what on earth is he on about? But I've just realised, <laughs> if I put some glasses on, we are basically all the same. 
<laughs> it, it, it looks ridiculous on screen. I wish I had some glasses to hand to put on, but he's just flashed that corner. I was like, what on earth is that about? But now I just clicked. And yeah, I think we may need to sort of widen the demographic a little bit. <laughs> Have you got a beard? Do you wear glasses? <laughs> the worst on, game. So worst game. Game. Yes, Do you have niche <laughs> rugby league memorabilia to throw on? <laughs> yes, it is the worst game of guessing possible. And um, obviously, um, Martin here says, um, could I give a special message uh, to, to Mark, who's celebrating his 40th this week? <laughs> <laughs> And then Stuart, I know I'm losing my hair, but surely people don't think I'm quite 40 yet. I'm... And Stuart says that he loves you, really. Stuart is the one that started this vicious rumour. Um, <laughs> I see that clone thing is coming. Uh, David, what what are you expecting from from 2019 as a as, as a Wigan fan? You know, we we've talked about aspirations on on Matt Shaw, but what is a good season for Wigan this year? Oh, well, so, well how, how do you follow a grand final winning season? I mean, a good season is obviously tip bringing a trophy home. Um, I think Mark touched on it last week. You know, we do a good Challenge Cup run. I'm um, sure yeah. Ian Lennon are going to be pleased with that as well, just because of the monetary rewards that come with that, as opposed to the grand final has better split a bit. But for me, it's just around that, you know, the, the style of play changing. Um, I think, as I said on the show last week, Lamb's you know, not really under pressure. I mean, there was an interesting story came out today where Edwards has kind of put a bit of cold water and said he, he might not be here in 2020 if everything goes well with Lamb, which has uh, ruffled a few feathers. But yeah, just, I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, Lamb's work, you know, particularly with George Williams, you know, he, he thrives with yeah. a halfback coaching him. Um, and obviously we've got the, you know, the Zach, as you already said, the Zach Arnaker factor. Um, he surely has to behave himself now. And if he does, then we've got ourselves a, you know, a genuine top class player there, Man of Steel, you know, former Man of Steel. So a, a different dimension and a different direction from what we used to last season with Sam Tompkins, uh, in, you know, pulling the strings in the back line. Gareth, did you see this story today from, from Sean Edwards? What do you make of it? Do you, do you see it as sort of uh, tongue in cheek from him or, or, or do you think he's, there's an element of seriousness? If anybody didn't see this, this is uh, Sean Edwards pretty much saying uh, in a quote today that, you know, if Adrian Lamb wins everything, then he'll stand aside and let Adrian Lamb continue and he perhaps won't take the Wigan job. I'm not too quite too sure how serious to take that, but what are your thoughts, Gareth? I, I think his quotes may have been taken a little bit out of context. Lovely journalists do that kind of thing to people <laughs> to people's quotes. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I, think, I think he was more or less saying that, well, just what it... What he said, really, if, if, Lamb, if Lamb sweeps the board and wins everything, if we win the World Club Challenge, if we win the Super League, if we win the, if we win the Challenge Cup, how, how can Lamb not continue in the job? Because he would, have done a, he would have done a great job. I think that's more what he was trying, what he was trying yeah. to say. I, personally I think he said that before, I, I, hasn't he? I personally don't think that will happen. Um, and I think you'll see Sean Edwards coaching Wigan in 2020. But, yeah, I... It's sort of just like wrong time. It's almost like the wrong thing to say. He's probably been thinking it, but to say it is then, like you say, it's caused, uh, well, not not upset, but like you say, it's ruffled a few feathers. I think, did Ian Lanigan come out and make an official statement? Did I, did I read that? Yeah, I, mean, I, th- I think if any, anything that leads the chairman to make a comment has obviously got people talking, hasn't it, for, for one, one reason or another. Um, but, but what I don't understand about hey, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure in the statement, it, Ian Elegant said, well, me and Sean have been talking on a regular basis. So if that was news to him, then why isn't Sean Edwards... Surely, surely Sean Edwards, when he sat down with Wigan and when he sat down with Chris Radlinski and when he sat down with Ian Lennigan, they would have said to him, you know, what's your thoughts on Adrian Lamb coming in for a season? Surely yeah. he would have said, "Well, if Adrian Lambs wins everything, he should keep the job." I, I don't, I don't quite understand. You know, it it just seems odd timing, really. It just seems odd, odd timing. But perhaps his words have been twisted. But like you say, for Wigan to actually release an official statement, then they obviously realise there's an, an issue that needs addressing. I, I, I guess. Mark, Ed, you, Edwards you has always start. been. He's always been the kind of bloke who's kind of just said stuff, though, hasn't he? Like, <laughs> you know, it's been it's been quote worthy for the local press when he was when he played here in the past. You know, wherever he's been, he's just kind of said stuff. <laughs> I don't put huge amount of weight about some of the stuff he says. I don't think he takes 
like interviews with the press quite so um, he oh, doesn't I don't quite think understand he likes the repercussions <laughs> maybe that the rest of us are going to start thinking about what he said. My, 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 Gareth, my, you were going to say? Yeah, no, I was going to say, my, one thing my dad always used to say about Sean Edwards and I hope you're not watching, Sean. Don't, don't, don't you be telling us. <laughs> no, my I don't, of all the people that watch this, I he's doubt been, Sean uh, Edwards has ever he, heard um, of this or what we do. So don't well, worry, Gareth. Don't um, but my dad always said he's just not very bright. Is what my dad used to say about him when he was <laughs> when he was definitely not watching now. <laughs> he was a player. Um, All that goodwill with the club. Cheers, Gareth. <laughs> 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 I just had to say that. <laughs> Um, just edit one of Mark, them cock noises over this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark, you, um, Super League pod, you said about 24 hours left on, on the season 2019, what people think will happen during the 2019 season. You teased a little bit on uh, on Match Show about what Wigan fans are expecting. Can you can you give us a little bit more insight? You, you've Obviously, you get a wide range of, of views, not just from Wigan fans, but from Rugby League fans in general. So what are they saying about Wigan? Yeah, sure. I mean... Most people um, are saying that Wigan will finish in the top top four, top five playoffs. Um, you know, there's only a few bit of twisted souls who want to put us down in 11th and 12th just because they don't like us. Um, yeah. the, the average sort of voter has, has come around about fourth place for, for Wigan. Um, and then the Wigan fans have put us in first or second, tended to. So average all of that together, because we've had a good amount of Wigan fans. Uh, so thanks for you all who've been who watched this and who've got involved. Um Got a good amount of Wigan fans. That's, that's brought it maybe to third, which is where the bookies have us, isn't it? If you talk about like the whole rugby league fan base and then the bookies, everyone has us around about third. Um, of the favourites for Man of Steel, I mean, the bookies have Blake Austin, don't they? Us, the big favourite. Uh, it seems like increasingly the favourite, and the, uh, the the fans feel the same way. He's I don't want to, you know, we've got our season preview and prediction shows coming up next week. I don't want to take too much away from that. But I don't think it's a huge shock to anyone that he's leading the way in that. But from a Wigan perspective, um, George Williams is is earning a few votes as well. And I think uh, we need to recognise kind of what other people in the press have been saying as well. Like Gary Schofield did his, his piece and... Uh, and I know people don't always put a lot of credit into to what he says because he just kind of is another one who just says what he thinks and doesn't really think about the consequences sometimes. But I don't think he, he thinks he so, Mark. I think you're giving him too much credit there. Saying that he, had, he, he thinks is, uh, is a lot of credit that I don't think he deserves. Well, Sorry. well, he has uh, he has George Williams, doesn't he? Just needing to like step up and deliver in a, in a way this this year. There was um, what's his what's his name? The Jamie Soward said how Canberra should have gone out and signed him as well hands off we haven't got wid up now definitely so let's keep yeah. Williams around please hands off NRL but uh people are expecting a lot out of Williams this year and I think you know it, it's not recognized enough is it just how potent our left edge is whoever plays there whether it's yeah. Farrell or Greenwood in the second row whether it's Sargentson or Gildar in the center whether it's Burgess or uh, Marshall or Davies on the wing. We score loads of tries down there. And who's the consistent thing when we're scoring loads of tries down there? It's George Williams. So um, so he's a front runner from a, a Wigan perspective, although he's, he's a little bit behind Blake Austin on an overall point of view. But I, I, I'm on board with that kind of thinking, even though my tip is Alex Walmsley. I think that's going to be a great story if he comes back from yeah, nearly breaking his neck. But um, from a Wigan perspective, yeah. George Williams. David, who, who's your tip for, uh, for Man of Steel? I know it's sort of... Uh... The tedious subject, I think, for the start of the season, but I think it's the the go to t- subject for any uh, podcast, vlog, or or columnist at this moment in time. Who, who's your tip for for Man of Steel? Yeah, I mean, in, from a from a league perspective, you've got to look at Blake Austin. Really, he's coming in at the peak of his game, and you know, he's, he's a great signing for Warrington. Wigan perspective, um, obviously, you're looking at what Zach Hardy can do. He's been there and done it before. Um, could make a crucial difference. Um, George Williams again, like you said. I mean, I think uh, the actual Super League uh, Twitter page did sort of Wigan's top five tries, and I think every one of them came down that left edge, you know, which which says it all really. Yeah. But for me, an outside bet's Joe Greenwood. Um, he's come in. He's you know towards the end of last season, taken you know swapped in from where Joel Tompkins left off and and excelled really. And you know we've lost Bateman, we've lost quite a bit of experience, but Greenwood's not far behind him experience wise. And it's just a different style of, of game that he plays. And, you know, for all his, all his assets, John Bateman wasn't the kind of player that's going to sort of get put through on the halfway line and burst through and rampage through defences. And 
Joan Greenwood showed quite a lot of glimpses of that last season. So I'm looking forward to to using our second rows in a different way this season. Someone, really someone on this show Joe voted for Jared Sammet to be the uh, to be the Man of Steel, didn't they, Sean? In the Super League pod predictions, <laughs> did they? <laughs> Forgot on that one. Like... <laughs> Whoever that is, is knows rugby league and obviously wants to imitate Jared Sammet's beard, um, but is about six months behind him. Uh, after trying, I tried to get him for for an interview at the, the media day, um, but he was one of the people that was in demand. What I wanted to do was one, ask him um, what he uses on his beard, uh, and to compare lengths of beard, um, which I thought might have been one of those uh, viral moments um, and possibly put him off uh, Wigan for life. But I didn't get round to it, so who, who knows? One, one day I might. But yes, Jared Summer is my tip for Man of Steel. Why not? Um, well, yeah, why not? Uh, Gareth, yeah. who do you think is going to be up there? Yeah, I agree with what the boys say. I, I, I think George Williams got a massive season. I, I think George Williams was really key to us winning the grand final without ever pulling up any trees. I, I think he yeah. was he was very underrated. Um, you know, the kick to the corner that set up one of the tries in the grand final, which was probably the game changer. A lot of people said it was lucky, but I thought it was a brilliant piece of play. Um, and like I say, Williams. I think one of the I think one of the key things of Williams. I think he has to play with the same scrum half each week or more or less the same scrum half each week. You know, we had this, I think we did it last year, didn't we? When we did the preview show for Wigan that we said that Lulawai and Powell would interchange between seven and nine. I think if yeah. if Adrian Lamb decides who's going to play at seven and who's going to play at nine and we stick with that, I think that will help Williams uh, no end. I agree with what the guy said about Greenwood as well. I think Greenwood was the game changer for us. Um because he did come in as a direct replacement for Joel Tompkins. And Tompkins had been in and out of the side. He's in, he'd been injured, uh, loss of form. And I think Greenwood was brilliant for us. I thought the game the game where he really comes to the fore was away against St. Helens. I thought he was absolutely yeah. brilliant that night. Oh, yeah. And that, was that I think, was the game that changed our season. Ben Barber falling flat on his ass. I mean, you know, I could watch that all day. I mean, that's just <laughs> brilliant, that was. Um, and then, yeah, then Zach, the, Hard- yeah. then Zach Hardacre, who, like we said, has previously won the Man of Steel, who if we can get him fit or, or not fit or can get him up game speed, because you think rugby league is a sport that advances so quickly to be out for that length of time. Um you know, to come back in and perform at the level he did when he almost single-handedly won won it for Castleford two years ago, um, it's going to be difficult for him. But if he can recreate that form and the form he showed at Leeds when he won the grand final, then I think Wigan have got a, a world-class player there. So at any one of those three, I think, Hardacre, Greenwood or George Williams, if you're going to... Well, Hardacre yeah, hasn't been... Go on. Well, Hardacre hasn't been getting the votes in. Um, and I think possibly, you know, there's too much baggage around Hardacre for Man of Steel for me. But definitely I agree with you, Gareth. His, 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 his talent on the field is absolutely undeniable. Right. Um, probably second in the Wigan count is is Liam Farrell. And a few, yeah. there was, I saw a mention People pop up there. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Meadows, yeah. Yeah, that's a fair shout. As well, okay. the season. Going back to Hardacre, I don't know if any of you guys uh, read the piece that Aaron Bauer in The Guardian did with him at the yeah. weekend, which was, you read it and you almost thought, well, we've heard all this kind of thing before, but if ever there is a guy that's got his last chance, it, it, you know, he, it would be such a waste <laughs> if, 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 if he you know makes last chance. this. Um, he's, but he's on his final last chance right. now, though. Yeah. Right? There, is, there is a difference, apparently. But, it, but it's it, it's, now, right. it, it's now or never yeah. for him, really. And it would just be such a, a waste of possibly the best fullback of our generation in, in, other than Sam Tompkins that the UK have produced. Um, yeah, absolutely. And he's, you know, what, just what a waste, yeah. what a waste of, of a talent. I, I think if there was no hope of him regaining that form and sorting his life out. I think after the drink driving thing, I think Wigan would have just cast him aside then. There must have been some form of... Uh, you could never have any guarantees that he's not going to misbehave. Yeah. But yeah. Ian Lennigan and Chris Radlinski and the rest of the guys there, or and Adrian Lamb, obviously the coach that's got to work with him, must have had some form of guarantee that he was going to behave himself. Otherwise, he would have just been... They would have tore his contract up and... Well, one thing that you just said there, Gareth, which which sort of took me back to um, 
another missed opportunity or, or sort of lost in translation. I was lost in translation with talking to Romain Navarrete the other day and I was also lost in translation absolutely, completely with Morgan Escaray, so much so that I don't even have an interview that I can put on. So one of the questions that I'd set up um, was to ask him about how he felt, Morgan Escaray, about getting the number one jersey. And I thought, you know, put, throw a little bit of humour in there, see if he gets it. And So I said, what, what's it like to... Um, to, to be given the number one jersey after so many iconic people have, have had the jersey, taking it off Sam Tompkins, uh, Chris Radlinski, Richie Mathers. And at, at Richie Mathers, <laughs> Richie the question... Mathers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just I, I, I really wanted, what, what I was trying to get him to, to do was put him down for something like... Uh, you know, uh, to, to follow uh, Richie Mathers or something like that. To, but yeah, he just, he didn't understand the question. <laughs> Absolutely not at all. And he uh, got pulled over somewhere else, which uh, probably saved him and saved me from uh, from further embarrassment. Uh, a question that, that's coming through on here, which, which is relates to um, obviously the change in number of interchanges. Mark, how do you think um, we're going to go on to operate this season? So we've got Hardacre, starting fullback you'd think Morgan Escaray off the bench you've got Sam Powell to play hooky you've got Tommy Luluai to play seven or hooky you've got Jared Summit to play seven or not play you've got George Williams fitting there James Barrow puts on here you know pen with the interchanges you can't afford to carry two hookers so who how do you fit all of those people in do you think I think it's going to be I think it's going to be dependent on whether um, O'Loughlin plays or not if O'Loughlin plays he can't do 80 minutes anymore um so we need to think about more forward interchanges but if if it's you know if your back row is people like uh, Farrell and Greenwood and maybe Hamlin or someone like uh, that uh, they can do longer minutes so um so i think that then you can still have Luluai or Escaray coming off the bench or Samet um Samet yeah. came off the bench quite a lot for London last year actually i, I think when London hit a rough patch in the middle of the season. One of the swaps they did was to put Sam off the bench to start changing games for them when when they were... Uh, <laughs> 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 Do you remember the cowardice of his last moment for Wigan when he, he tripped that... It was against Wakefield, I think. He tripped a bloke up rather than trying to tackle him because he was such a coward. He got sent off, and that was the last we saw of him in, in a Wigan shirt. No, um, I think the interchanges thing is going to be really interesting, but we, we've talked about how fit we are, haven't we, loads of times. And as long yeah. as we haven't lost any of that fitness, we can carry a a, a non-forward on the bench and still and still be fit enough. I just worry about O'Loughlin in this, if he's in the starting side, we need something to cover the fact that his calf's going to go at some point in the first 10 minutes of, of games, sadly. Um, David, how do you think this is going to work? It's an interesting sort of puzzle to try and fit the pieces in. And the <clears> added <throat> conundrum is this, um, what we're down to now, eight interchanges, Mark, you're, eight. you're the stat yeah. Uh Eight interchanges, David. Yeah, it's a bit of a, it, I think you're like looking at probably, trying to get us you've got to keep everybody happy haven't you I mean you know you, like you said you've alluded to last season it was a bit different because we had Tompkins would move up into the halves you know we had a few problems around halves last season obviously we switched Powell and Lula mid-season um, I think next season if, is, is S. Gray going to be the one that's missing out if Zach's playing because obviously he's probably looking to have somebody that can cover halves and hook rather than you know full back and halves next season so it's anyone's guess I think I think the key is having a settled you know settled halfback pairing but taking I mean you would imagine that Samet's probably got to prove himself to get into the starting lineup. Um Escaray as well even though he's got the number one shirt I think it's pretty clear that Hardacre you know is is likely to be the starting fullback so I, I, yeah I, I couldn't tell you to be honest with you it's to glad Lamb's getting paid for making those decisions rather than me because you could have some unhappy people uh, through the season before we uh, move on to the the scholars game on Friday, I have a sort of quick thought of, of what, what we expect from that and, and the actual game itself. And, and the same with with Sunday is another line from, and you may have seen this on on Twitter from uh, um, from Joe Bullock, Joe Bullock, and in particular Joe Bullock's girlfriend. I assume Natalie is Joe Bullock's girlfriend. Yes. Um, for, from one of the uh, from one of the the things that she put on there. So so this thing, I've, I've done a teammates video which is which is about eight minutes long, and I'll hopefully get it on uh, later tonight after the show, which is pretty interesting. So I asked people, you know, who's the fastest in the club? Who's the most vain? Which is very interesting. Uh, who's the hardest? Who's the most skillful? That kind of thing. And um, who's the quickest? 
Joe Bullock came third in the forty meter sprints, which I think I think we've all seen on, on Twitter that I put on that on there. He, he Morgan Escare won, I think maybe Gildart came second, Bullock third, and and George Williams fourth. But the story is that, and and I believe this is a genuine story. I thought it was a joke at first, but Joe Bullock beat his girlfriend's horse in a fifty meter race. He beat a horse <laughs> in a race. <laughs> Well, as big as Gingery used to be a winger. I mean, she she said she never thought that her horse would get beaten by a ginger, and uh, <laughs> the fact that we've got Joe Ginger's Bullock, wrong. who's yeah, and is going to be playing pro. It's incredible. I can't. I, I mean, the opportunity for him to maybe make those clean breaks is, is not going to perhaps be as as great as it possibly could be. But I'd love to see him re, um, repeat that seventy meter try that he scored at, at Barrow. But there's a little. Uh, a little amusing story that came from off the back of the media there on Twitter uh, yesterday. On, on Joe Bullock, Sean, um, yeah. and I think possibly his girlfriend as well, because I'm not, I'm not sure, but it, it, you know, he was pretty close with the people he used to go and sit with. But the last few years at the Summer Bash at Blackpool, um, all the all the you know players and stuff tend to finish the game, get on the coach, go back to where they they go back to. But for the last couple of years, Joe Bullock after the Barrow game has gone, got changed and all that, and then jumped in the stands and started having a couple of pints with, I guess, his <laughs> friends and family and that. And uh, and so and so, I wonder if he'll repeat that magic weekend now. He's a serious professional. <laughs> and we, I was right about Natalie. Uh, Natalie's obviously watching. Uh, Natalie, I didn't want to just assume. I'm sorry, but thank you so much for sharing that story with me about the uh, about the horse and, and Joe. Um, so um, the, the cartoons that we put in the fanzine as well. Um, we've sort of commissioned uh, a cartoon of Joe Bullock, Joe Bullock um, racing against horses as well, which I'm sure will be uh, will be quite interesting <laughs> as and when that develops as well. Um, Gareth, we've got two friendlies this weekend. Uh, another thing that came from the media day is about 11. Um, 11 first-team players are going to be at least starting against London Scholars. So you would imagine you know, the likes of Liam Byrne, perhaps Joe uh, Bullock himself, um, may, may be playing, if not certainly the Salford game. How important are these sort of two games? The Scholars game is obviously typically 19s, but it looks like we're going more for a first team, fringe first team uh, squad against the Scholars on Friday. Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, for me, for someone who's an exile, I think the Scholars game is really important for rugby league as a whole, not just for, you know, not just for the clubs that are involved, because it, you know, it's Wigan playing a lesser team. Um, you know, it's it, it's a prestigious day for for, for London Scholars. From I mean, it was going for a few years, but you know, it, it's a good PR exercise for us, I think, and it's good and it's good for rugby league as well. Um, yeah, we're not going to play a first team, obviously, because that that would just be pointless. Um, but yeah, you'd want the young lads to to to, to get minutes. Um, yeah. and you would think by playing two friendlies in three days that no one that plays on Friday will then play at Salford on Sunday. No, I actually, so, they, they are. They are. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, Jack Shorrocks is one of them. I spoke to, to Jack Shorrocks. Think. But, but, you are, but, but someone like Shorrocks, you would, I mean, he's a fringe player. I wouldn't say that he's going to be in the 17th. There's no the I mean, Super League game, is he? No, I mean, I mean Zach Hardacre, for paid. example, isn't isn't no. doubling up. But a lot a lot of the, the first team fringe players are apparently going to be playing sort of forty minutes on Friday and then backing up again uh, to get some minutes again at, I mean, at Salford uh, on, on Sunday. I mean, with the greatest respect, I would see, and I've always viewed the game against London Scholars more as an exhibition match, really. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and where it's played throws into that. Yeah, and, and and please, London Scholars. If again, if anyone from your club's watching that, it's not meant to be disrespectful. It's a great day for your club, but it it is more an exhibition game. The the more important game for us, I think, is is obviously Salford on on Sunday um, to see how we go there. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, it you know the the, the start of the season is is less than a fortnight, three weeks away. So you would think that. I would like to see us play almost our first 11, uh, first 11, I'm talking about football, first, <laughs> first, first 13 from the start. And, and it, would be, it would be interesting to see who the starting lineup is. I mean, obviously, because it's a friend, yeah. there'll be loads of interchanges and substitutions. But for that first 20 minutes, it will be interesting to see who plays at hooker, who plays yeah. at... Who plays at um, uh, who plays at halfback? Who the wingers are? Um, the centre, you know. There's, there's one of the guy, one of the 
the other guys said earlier, you know, Adrian Lamb's got some real problems because he can only put 13 men out on the pitch and he's probably got 17, 18, 19 players vying for those 13, 13 spots. Um, I, yeah, wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that anyone's an automatic shoe in really. I think O'Loughlin would play if he's fit um, because he's so key to what we do and when we, when we play well. You know, other than that, there's there's some there's real good competition for places. Um, and in terms of the Sulphur game, I think you just want everyone to come out of it injury free, really, with a with a positive re- with a positive result. Um, Salford, they're they're a funny side, aren't they? I mean, you know, they've struggled off the field. They've struggled off the field. Um, they haven't really recruited. I mean, obviously, they got the boy Hastings, who I'd have actually liked to see us. I signed Hastings instead of Jared Samet, to be honest, because I thought he was. I, I thought he was. No, no, I thought. I think the club I, would have liked for us to have signed. I, I think that's true, Hastings. But we've got oh, he only wanted to stay one year. Man, it, you know, Man I, of Steel, two thousand and nineteen. What Jackson Hastings? <laughs> Is there an oh, Jared Samet? <laughs> Honestly, you're laughing. I mean, I don't want to start like a Navarrete theme sort of Matt McCauley oh, obsession. No. That's why but, I was laughing. Oh. I think we're already there. Yeah, we are. We've gone past that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm changing my physical appearance to to be like yeah. Jared Summit. All you, need I don't, gla- all you need some glasses to look like us, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, uh, Matt, yeah, do we... you think? Oh, go on. Sorry, no, I, right. Matt, no, no, I, no, no, I want to ask you. I want to ask you on, on this. Do you think the approach for the pre-season games has to be different from Ed, for Adrian Lamb than it was for Sean Wayne? One, because he obviously needs to get to know the players. But for Sean Wayne, it almost felt like he was quite happy to go into the season a little bit cold. He didn't never really played a first-team a first team squad other than maybe 40 minutes the game before. Do you think Adrian Lamb will change that tact um, this year with the three friendlies that we've got coming up? Sean Wayne liked losing all the preseason games because it meant everyone could say that we were going to do rubbish and he could like <laughs> do the whole Jose Mourinho style backs against the wall, no one rates us kind of motivational yeah. stuff. I think, um, and he needs to see the players playing. But if I'm right, they've been doing some contested training sessions against Lee as well. So I, yeah. I think we won't be seeing all of what Adrian Lamb's seeing of the of the team actually getting together and playing as a team. I, I just think. Um, I think Gareth, Gareth's spot on. We want to see the first choice 13 that we're expecting to go into the start of the season with for 20 minutes, 30 minutes at Salford and then start shuffling it about. We've got a really big game just two weeks into the season. Well, first game's massive, obviously, but then we've got a final two, three weeks into the season. So we need to start getting some something into the legs of these guys. It doesn't matter the results, though, does it? So start swapping around half-time, not bothered. But I think the Salford game's the only game we are going to see the proper first team play. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that is the case, isn't it? And then they've got time to recover, work on what the what you know partnerships or, or whatever. Um, and then obviously we've got the, the trip up to back up to Barrow for Joe Bullock, keep on the Joe Bullock theme. Um David, your hopes and aspirations from these three games, what do you expect to see for, from Adrian Lamb and do you think we can read too much into the partnerships? I think if we remember last year um, Matt came on the show and said one Sam Powell's going to wear the number 7 shirt and then the next day he got the number 7 shirt he told us exactly how they were going to interchange with the switcheroo do you think that we'll get that kind of insight from, from the Salford game from Adrian Lamb? Um, no, I think I think we'll get a good view of what his, what his team's going to look like against Saints um, I don't think we'll get too much more than that to be honest with you because like I said I'm sure he kept a keen eye on Wigan, you know, and I'm sure he's seen all the games from the tail end of last season anyway, or once his his job was announced, because obviously he need to know who he's keeping, etc. Yeah. But need to do season families at all. You know, it's it's about getting a bit of fitness up. We've got the contested games against Lee, but it's it's just about 20, 30 minutes Salford, see how we get on with those and hopefully not have any injuries and hopefully not have any two problems with the positions that he's chosen for the players as well, just making sure the combinations work and are effective. It shouldn't be too bad because we've finished the season pretty much, you know, apart with the exception of um, Hardacre, you know, but we have, we've had S. Gray finishing the season off. So there's, there's not too much disruption, I think. You know, we've had a bit of turnover, but nothing major. And we've had players that are coming in and, and are used to being in those positions. So not... I don't think we'll see too much from you know. I don't think Lam will show his cards too much in in the friendlies. I think it's just about getting the combinations working. Okay, um, let's finish with um, 
everything I think that we're all excited about as Wigan fans, New Camp. Um, Gareth, what represents uh, a good turnout, do you think? What, what's a successful either attendance or, or what do you expect to, to see from, from Wigan versus Catalans in the New Camp? I saw yes, um, at the media day that Ian Lennigan confirmed that Catalans are playing in, in Barcelona colours as well, which, which will obviously add to the, uh, add to the occasion. So, so they'll be in Barca colours playing at the New Camp. What, what represents success, do you think, for that, for that venture? I, I don't really, I don't really know to be honest. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been there. I've been there two or three times. I've actually watched a game there before. It's, it's a huge stadium. It is massive. It, it holds ninety thousand, but it seems like it's more. I don't know. We're not going to get ninety thousand, are we? That's not going to happen. Um, I, I don't know. Would, would twenty thousand? Would twenty thirty thousand be a, 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 a reasonable? I think, did I think that would be? I, I think personally that would be fantastic. It's did just... correct me if I'm wrong here. Did Warrington play Catalans in a game in Barcelona a few years yeah, it was ago? At the Olympic Stadium, uh, I think. About, 10, the, about eight eight nine years ago, yeah. At the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah which yeah. so I've been I've not, not showing off here, but I've been there as well to watch a game. And uh, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you, he's been everywhere. Been, I know. Did you upset anyone there as well? No, you got it back? There's a funny story about that, but I won't say it. It's a bit it's before <laughs> nine o'clock. Um, and, uh, but if I can remember rightly, I mean that that only holds about forty thousand. But if I can if I remember rightly, the Catalans were Catalans were they got more than they thought for that. So they got about sixteen and a half thousand for that, I think, if I remember that, right. Did they? Yeah, wow. which, which wow. I think was more than they thought. If memory, again, if memory says right, I think they thought they would get ten, and they got more. Um, but what I would say about Barcelona is, is it's a sport mad city. You will get a lot of people, I think, that will just go because there's something on at the new camp, which yeah, which is which is great. I think great for our sport and a great bit of PR. Um, it will be the weather will be lovely there in May as well. And again, if you when you go. It's not that far out of the centre of the city as well, so it you know. Well, within two minutes, you've been Michael Palin and Michael Fish. Just <laughs> <laughs> giving you some advice, you know. Um, so yeah, like I say, 20, 20, 30 thousand would be would be brilliant. But like you say, it's captured. It's really captured the imagination of the Wigan fan base. I mean, yeah. Christ, I've lost yeah, out of the amount of, of different the comments, little, you know? little Facebook groups have, have have come up with like you know, trip to the new camp and where are we going to drink in? Do you know what I mean? It, it re- people are talking about it now like it's the biggest event of the season when you think we've got the World Club Challenge game, we've got the start, start of the actual season and yet all people are talking about is this is this trip? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the question that I put to the players in the media day as well is, is new camp because, and every single one of them is desperate to be in that in in that squad to to get on the on on the pitch or in the squad or as close to that game as as they possibly can. Mark, you mentioned the the um, Warrington um, Catalans game in Barcelona. Do you think that sets the precedent? You're saying sixteen thousand, so you know sixteen thousand. If I remember right, I, I might. It was it was certainly well over ten thousand, like Gareth says. Um, if I remember right, it was about that. But I think twenty five thousand and five. Yeah, because it's another record. It's a new it's like record, a record, isn't it? You can start. You can start sort of like I was 13 years old. Come on. We, yeah. we, you know, Leeds had an opportunity last year against Castleford and I thought they were going to break it then and they didn't they didn't even come close, as close as I thought they were going to come in that one. So that's what I think it's, it's going to be. Um, for me, success is going to be get, getting home and remembering to get on the plane home because I think it's going to be a great <laughs> trip. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going? Matt, you're going? Yeah, I'm, I'm going, yeah. Friday to Tuesday, I think I'm going no, to try and get cheaper no, flights out. It's a weekend for me, so I have to, you know, it, keep the bay and hop away at a weekend by covering the <laughs> off. Then hostile voice doesn't cover Barcelona. Yeah. It means close enough. Well, actually, I have I have written, believe it or not, I have. I, I'm going to tell you this now. I have written <laughs> two rugby league articles deep in deep darkest corner, which would entitle me to. I thought uh, you were going to say in Spain then. <laughs> <laughs> which would entitle me to media accreditation from the RFL, but I, I don't quite see how the, there's any relevance, to be honest. So I don't, I don't think I could blag that one. <laughs> well, we did have a partnership at one point with the uh, Cornish Rebels, didn't we, briefly? <laughs> no, they've, got, they've gone to St. Or, or the Helens. Sharks, or one of those teams. They've gone, they're, 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 in, they're in cahoots with St. Helens now. That's are, right. Or yeah. they were. 
I don't know if they are anymore. David, are you going over to Barca? Uh, hopefully, not booked yet, but hopefully getting there. Yeah, I've, I've just booked my flights last week, so um, I will be looking to try and. Org- we'll have um, sort of Wigan fan TV on tour, I think. Um, lads, um, lads, lads. Yeah, and everybody to to quote the Lab Brooks advert. Uh, we're we're in, we're an inclusive bunch. Um, yeah, I want to I want to do. S- <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> we're going to be start drinking a drinking a pint of mild in the uh, English pub at the end of the round. <laughs> um, David, what, what represents success for you for, uh, at Barcelona? I mean, I, I think what Mark just touched on there—a Super League record. Um, we've got the we we all hold the Super League record in the world, don't we? Because um, we we hold the largest attendance for a Super League Europe game in Australia uh, yeah. because it was the only one. Um, <laughs> so to, to, to take the one in in Spain, Europe, and the world would would be pretty good. But what 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 do you think is uh, success, uh, David? Yeah, I think so. I think in terms of tenses, I think if you get if you get anything like above the Super League record, it, you've got to class it as a success. I mean. Catalans, for their part, have been pushing it. Um, I saw a quote from Lenigan saying, you know, hopefully they can take around 20,000 there. Um, there'll be a few thousand Wiganers there as well. Um, and the French, you know, the French Federation have done their job as well. They, I think they've cancelled all the games for that weekend as well. So there's no other sort of rugby league in and around France yeah. either. So they're doing their bit. I think everybody's pushing it. Maybe not the RFL, but I think everybody's pushing to make this as big a success mm-hmm. as possible. And if they can attract the casual you know, sports fans from over there as well. Um, I think the Spanish Grand Prix as well, just the, the week before or the week after. And, you know, if you can sort of, you might get some petrol heads who might go down as well if they're there beforehand. So 30,000 for me would be a great success. I mean, obviously the new camp's not going to look anything like full, but, you know, an iconic stadium and a, and a record crowd, I think you, you're looking at yeah. that and obviously a Wigan win. You mentioned the um, the, the French uh, cancelling all, all of the games for that weekend, which, which is fantastic and forward thinking. But without sort of um, wanting to sort of put any stereotypes, uh, the sort of French going on strike, I don't think needs a lot of encouragement, really, does it? <laughs> if, if we're being honest, that, that that wasn't a hard conversation, was it? Wow. Let, yeah, let's have a weekend off. Let's all go to Barcelona for the weekend. That, that was the easiest decision they've <laughs> ever, ever made, let's be honest. Um, if they're going to travel guys, down on trains, maybe uh, Gareth can complete the trilogy and do Michael um, Michael <laughs> Portillo on the uh, old <laughs> Great European Railways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pal. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Martin says, uh, who's coming to Barrow, uh, anybody going to any of the friendly games, Gareth? I guess it's imp- pretty much impossible for <laughs> you. Mark, impossible for me, yeah. yeah. Mark, are you going to any? Uh, plan on going to Salford. I don't think Barrow's going to be possible for me. David? I- I'm flying a helicopter this weekend, so I'm missing wow. out, unfortunately. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Exclusive. Well, there we go. Can we go of, to Barrow? Of all the things I expected you to say then. <laughs> That is not right. <laughs> Never is that ever going to Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to go as far as Barcelona. I think it'll no, just be right. around. I think Salford's about the closest I'll get. Well, I mean, he, hasn't yeah, his, he hasn't booked his flights yet. He's trying to uh, maybe get the helicopter for May. <laughs> yeah, He's the flying from Barton Airport over the AJ Bell Stadium just so he, can, he doesn't have to pay for a ticket. I mean, that's what I, I like you thinking, David. It, it um, is I'll be at the... so uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I get a banner out for Matt. <laughs> Uh, um, if anyone's going down to uh, to London on Friday, I will be there. Uh, so come and say hello. I, I, you know, of all the friendlies to go to, why not go to the the most random one that you possibly can, and the furthest one away from Durham? So I'm uh, I'll be at the Scholars on on Friday, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, joining me, Mark. A little bit of a, do you want to give us a little bit of an insight to uh, to Super League Pod? Where yeah, so we we've got the predictions forms open for like another another day from now basically and then we'll be closing that down to do our predictions show next uh, tuesday and then the super league preview show will be next wednesday probably will be released uh, we've also hopefully got an interview lined up with a celebrity rugby league fan a celebrity rugby league uh, wigan fan so um looking to get that in next week as well so that might be exciting for everyone uh, uh, oh, is it not me i don't want to say too much 
<laughs> I mean, we're we're all celebrity Wigan fans now, apparently. And you guys, Absolutely. a couple of you have been on the show. Gareth, I'm sure, will come on at some point in the future when, especially when the uh, one of the Cornish sides cracks it in the Challenge Cup, <laughs> or the Southwest sides cracks it in the Challenge Cup. Um, but yeah, so there's loads to look forward to, and a bit of special stuff for Wigan fans to look forward to over the next week, hopefully too. Thanks Wonderful, for the, perfect. Allowing the plug. So- Hey, not, not a problem. So what we have decided to do, uh, Dates for Your Diaries, 8 o'clock Wednesday. This show will be on every week, Wednesday, 8 o'clock. None of this messing about. What When are you going to be on? Might be a Thursday, might be a Tuesday. Wednesday, 8 o'clock. Um, Matt will be doing his uh, debating show uh, once, twice a month. Um, it's been so hard well- not to say hold my pie all episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has actually. And I've not got any... I feel... I've, I'm in... <laughs> What what was our conservatory, but it has now been converted into my seven month old daughter's uh, playroom. And there's so many little toys that I could just grab hold of that will play random songs. So you know, picnic basket was was I was contemplating the picnic basket, uh, which plays my noise. Got but... that. My daughter's got that thing. I know the songs <laughs> off of that. I know the songs <laughs> off of that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the, there's lots that may be joining us uh, on the shows in, in the future, but but Matt will be back on this show and he'll also be back doing his own show. Uh, and like I said, I've got lots of content from, from the media day, which I'm going to be uh, spamming you all with. Uh, and in the next hour or so, I'll get the, the teammates one up, which is uh, an, sort of eight minutes of, of really enjoyable. Uh, Josh Ganson absolutely ripping uh, George Williams for one reason or another. It's well worth a watch. So guys, thank you so much for, for joining me. Everybody, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you at the same time next week. 